Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of pathology which we are doing from medium robins. We are at the moment doing chapter number 20 and this is the pathology of endocrine system. Today's topic is going to be hyperthyroidism pathology. So we have already done a video on the introduction to thyroid gland pathology and today we will start hyperthyroidism. As the name indicates we are talking about uh, more thyroid function today hyper means it is functioning more which means there is more t3 and t4 being released from the thyroid gland okay so thyrotoxic causes is the word toxic se aapko ye word ka idea hona chahiye it is the word which is uh, designated for a hyper metabolic state because obviously if there is toxic level ke thyroid hormones release yani itna zyada hyperthyroidism hai ke there is thyrotoxic causes then the job of these hormones you know is uh, to regulate metabolism and if they are very very uh, you know increased amount secretion in the blood then there will be a hyper metabolic state okay and this is because of the elevated circulating levels of t3 and t4 because it is caused most commonly by hyper functioning of the thyroid gland thyrotoxicosis is often referred to as hyperthyroidism so i mean most of the it can be uh, a possibility that the patient is actually taking T3 and T4, exogenous T3 and T4, so that the level high is high. Well, that's a rare scenario. Most of the time, it is the thyroid gland which is producing a lot of T3 and T4, and therefore, because the thyrotoxic causes is because of uh, increased functioning of the thyroid gland, it is known as hyperthyroidism. So, uh, yeah, ke baad ye hai ke in most cases, thyrotoxicosis is the word which is remembered synonymously to hyperthyroidism. Dono ek hi use ke jate hai, hai? In certain conditions, however, the oversupply either is related to excessive release of preformed thyroid hormones, such as thyroiditis, yani jab iski inflammation hoti hai, jo T3, T4 bane pade hote hai, thyroid ke andar, inflammation ki wajay se wo release ho jate hai into the circulation. Or sometimes it can be because of some extra thyroidal source rather than hyperfunctioning of the gland. And we will talk about this in a minute in this particular table. Okay. Despite this clear distinction, the following discussion adheres to common practice of using the term thyrotoxicosis and hyperthyroidism interchangeably. All of these are two different things. Uh, but I have told you that the bottom line practical value ki ye hai ke they are used interchangeably. The three most common causes of thyrotoxicosis are associated with hyperfunctioning of the gland. The first one is diffuse hyperplasia of the thyroid gland associated with Graves' disease, a form of autoimmune thyroid disease, and that is the most common form. Ke pura jo gland hai, diffusely it undergoes hyperplasia, and that is a condition called Graves' disease. But basically, it has autoimmune origin. That's the most common cause of a hyperfunctioning thyroid. Then there is another category where we have hyperfunctioning, bracket mein dekhen likhai toxic, multinodular goiter, yani ek nodule yaan ban jayega, ek nodule yaan ban jayega, ek yaan, so there will be multiple nodules, diffuse enlargement nahi hoogi, you can feel and palpate the nodules, aur nodules ki wajah se, chunke thyroid gland ka size badhega, size badhne ko hum kehte hai goiter, aur baut saare nodules hai, isi liye se kehte hai multinodular, so there will be multinodular goiters. Okay, that is another category. Just iski wajah se bhi, there will be hyperfunctioning of the thyroid gland. And then number third is the adenoma. So there are not multiple nodules, there is a benign tumor, and that benign tumor is releasing a lot of T3 and T4. So these are the three categories. Number one will be diffuse enlargement, which is called Graves' disease. Number two is multiple nodule, multinodular goiter. And then number three is um, an adenoma, which is hyperfunctioning. Okay, in three cases, may there will be more T3 and T4 released into the circulation. The clinical manifestations of thyrotoxicosis are uh, protein and mainly attributable to hypermetabolic state because T3 T4 ka kaam ye na metabolism regulate karna so the person will be in hypermetabolic state so there will be overreactivity of nervous system. There will be, uh, you know, other constitutional symptoms. For example, the skin of these patients tend to be very soft and warm, tending to hypermetabolic state, flushed because of increased blood supply, peripheral vasodilation due to heat loss, because a lot of heat is being generated as this is a hypermetabolic state. Increased sympathetic activity uh, and hypermetabolism results in weight loss, because if you are too active, you lose weight. If you have hyperactive metabolism, you lose weight, okay? 
Then gastrointestinal symptoms include because there is hypermetabolic state, there is hypermotility of the gut that can lead to actually uh, some sort of diarrhea, uh, fat malabsorption, this sort of thing. Cardiac abnormal because sympathetic system is activated, the patient will be feeling palpitations, tachycardia, uh, and these are the manifestations in the cardiovascular system. Okay, older adult patients with pre-existing heart disease may develop congestive heart failure. Already heart failure se fail kar raha tha, ab you know sympathetic drive bad gayi hai. To sochein iska kya hal hoga? There can be neuromuscular uh, symptoms. Patients frequently experience nervousness, tremors. Irritability, all these, and because sympathetic system is activated, the patient is feeling irritability. So basically, everything goes on the hyper side. Everything is happening more, more heat production, more uh, excitability of the nervous tissue, more beating of the heart. All these things go towards the higher side. Ocular changes often call attention to hyperthyroidism because the changes in the eye are very much visible. So you can see the patient directly, and you see, oh, well, something is going wrong within the eyes. And you start identifying. So there is a wide staring gaze, lid lag are present because of sympathetic overstimulation of the superior tarsal muscle. So you see these legs are uh, lids are like this. So even if the patient closes the eye, uh, the eyes are not 100% uh, closed. Okay, because there is overstimulation of sympathetic system, overstimulation of that particular muscle. And uh, however, full-blown thyroid ophthalmoplegy associated with uh, paroptosis is a feature seen only in the Graves disease. Now, there is a condition called thyroid strom. Now, this is that there will be like too much thyroid hormones. It designates abrupt onset of severe hyperthyroidism. The patient is okay, you have thyroidism, but suddenly it goes hyperthyroidism. It occurs most often in patients with Graves disease. Probably, which is what you know now, Graves' disease is the diffuse enlargement because of the autoimmune issue. Yeah, so that is what I told you as a definition. Now, it occurs most commonly in Graves' disease. The thyroid is strong and probably results from acute elevation of catecholamine levels as might be encountered during infection, surgery. So, the person is living a happy life, but there is cold, surgery, infection, any stressful situation and the levels of the thyroid hormones suddenly go up and this situation is known as thyroid strong. It's a medical emergency because think about all these symptoms that we talked about. Um, you know, heat loss, heat generation, GI symptoms, cardiac symptoms. Now, all these are the symptoms if they are scaled up times 10. Yani, abhi heart itna beat kar raha hai. Thora T3, T4 aya, thora tez hua, multiplied by 100,000 because there is a lot of T3, T4 in thyroid strom. So the heart will go crazy. So therefore, this is an emergency and it has to be treated because cardiac arrhythmia se phir death ho sakti hai. Okay? Apathic, uh, apathetic hyperthyroidism refer to thyrotoxic causes occurring in older adults in whom the typical features of thyroid hormones excess are often blunted. The underlying thyroid disease is usually detected during laboratory workup of an unexplained weight loss or worsening cardiovascular disease. So these patients do not typically come with the signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism. Jo ke ye hote hain ki weight loss ho raha hai, garmi bahut zyada lag rahi hai, uh, neend nahi aa rahi, excitability bahut zyada hai. Ye symptoms agar ho, then we start thinking of hyperthyroidism. Lekin in older patients, ye symptoms itne clear uh, or you know uh, apparent nahi hote. The patients uh, are usually picked up on routine laboratory workup. But the patient aata hai kisi aur complaint ke saath. So for example, uh, weight loss hai jo kisi aur cheez se explain nahi ho. So it's an unexplained weight loss and there is a worsening CVS condition. So uska workup kar raha hai, pata chala TSH karwaya or T3, T4 karwaya. To pata ye laga ki ji levels of T3, T4 are high. So that's kind of an incidental finding. Okay, you are looking for something else but you find this. So that scenario is then known as apathetic hyperthyroidism. Yeah, simple words may squap, you know, uh, suboptimal. Yes, subclinical hyperthyroidism bhi keh sakte hai, if you like. The diagnosis of hyperthyroidism is basically based on clinical picture. How do the patients uh, look like? I have discussed symptoms aap discuss ki hai. Weight loss, diarrhea, all these sort of things. And then also the laboratory data. You do some blood testing. The measurement of serum TSH is the most useful single screening test for hyperthyroidism because TSH levels decreased even at the earliest stages. Now, this is very easy. If you have seen this video, where we talked about negative feedback mechanism, whenever there is T3, T4 release in high amounts, they go and negative 
uh, negatively feedback the release of TRH from hypothalamus, also negative feedback to TSH release from the pituitary. So basically, TSH level will be low if T3, T4 levels are high. So if we have hyperthyroidism, there will be low TSH level. This is negative feedback. So in these patients, we are expecting low levels of TSH. Okay, in rare case of pituitary or hypothalamus associated hyperthyroidism, TSH levels uh, may be normal or raised. So, the only scenario that you need to think about is if the pathology is not in the thyroid but rather it is here. Say, for example, pituitary may be garbar hai, just ki wajay se there is a lot of TSH. So, this TSH will go to the thyroid and this sara system activate hoga and there will be a lot of T3 and T4. अब ये T3 और T4 जाकर के इसको negatively suppress करने की कोशिश तो करेगा, but the primary pathology is in the pituitary. It will not be able to be suppressed by the negative feedback. So even though the levels of T3 and T4 are very high, they are not able to or they are not sufficient enough to suppress the pituitary problem and still TSH levels are high. अगर pathology मैं repeat कर रहा हूँ इसको, if the pathology is within the thyroid TSH levels will be low. If the pathology is within the pituitary or hypothalamus, the TSH level will still be high. They may be normal or high, okay? A low TSH value usually is associated with increased level of T4. It makes sense. Negative feedback. In the occasional patient, hyperthyroidism results predominantly from increased circulating levels of T3. So T4 is mainly responsible, but T3 can also do the job of negatively uh, inhibiting TSH. In such cases, free T4 levels may be decreased or direct measurement. Once the diagnosis of thyrotox, so typical picture would be increased T4, T3 levels and decreased TSH levels plus the clinical symptoms. That's the typical picture of thyrotoxicosis. It has been confirmed uh, by a combination of TSH and free thyroid hormone assays measurement of radioactive iodine uptake by the thyroid gland can be valuable in determining the etiology. So, once you uh, establish KG hyperthyroidism hai, yani T4, T3 increased hai, TSH decreased hai, or clinical scenario bhi hai. To ab ye karte hai ki ji thyroid gland ko radiologically labeled iodine dete hai, taki ye pata lage ki diffusely pura gland involved hai, yani agar pura gland diffusely involved hoga, to scan mein pura thyroid aapko involved milega. लेकिन अगर कोई एक पर्टिकुलर एरिया है सिर्फ सिर्फ एक एडिनोमा है देन ओनली दिस एडिनोमा एरिया विल बी हाइलाइटेड इन द स्कैन एंड द रेस्ट विल बी नॉर्मल और अगर मल्टी नोड्यूलर ग्वाइटर है सो यू विल हैव मल्टीपल एरिया सो दिस स्कैन देन हेल्प्स टू आइडेंटिफाई के पैथोलॉजी है किधर ओके फॉर एग्जांपल सच स्कैन्स मे शो डिफ्यूजली इंक्रीज अपटेक इन ग्रेव्स डिजीज एंड यू नो uh, solitary uptake in adenoma and multiple nodules in multinodular guider. So that's the bit and now this table. That's an important one. So uh, causes, thyrotoxic causes key. They can be primary causes and secondary causes. Primary is anything within the thyroid gland such as Graves disease, such as toxic multinodular goiter adenoma or iodine induced hyperthyroidism, any inflammation. So these are issues associated with thyroid gland itself. But as I told you, there can be problems in the pituitary. If the pituitary is involved, then there will be a TSH secreting pituitary adenoma. So it makes sense. More TSH, more thyroid functioning, more T3, T4. Okay, so these are hyperthyroidism and not associated with hyperthyroidism. These are also some thyrotoxic causes situations. Just name um, decurin thyroiditis, which is inflammation, subacute inflammation, stroma ovari. This is the ovarian teratoma of thyroid and factitious thyrotoxicosis. All these are actually not associated with increased T3, T4 levels, but there is still thyrotoxis. Go back to the discussion, which we start in this chapter. Ke. In certain conditions, however, the oversupply either is related to excessive release of the preformed thyroid hormone or comes from an extra thyroidal source rather than hyperfunctioning of the gland. So the gland is not working, but it's still, uh, you know, T3, T4 levels are coming. So it is not in true sense hyperthyroidism because the gland is not... Uh, you know, uh, working uh, too much, it's the other sources. And here is the distinction in this table. These conditions are associated with overfunctioning of the thyroid gland and therefore associated with hyperthyroidism, and these are not. But this is well too much of uh, things to remember. General discussion in Genam, 
um, the basic concepts that I discussed with you are all extremely super important. Okay, so that's all about the general concepts about the pathology of hyperthyroidism as detailed in Robbins. Next video, I will talk about hypothyroidism. So stay tuned.